The story starts with a peek into Rick's life five years after the bridge incident. He's now under the CRM's care, a secretive military group running a hidden city called Philadelphia. The CRM treats people like Rick, called rescues, as workers known as consignees. They have to toil for six long years before they can even think of becoming citizens. In this new world, Rick befriends Pearlthorne, a former South African Navy commander who's just as unhappy as him. They both despise the CRM's rules and restrictions. Rick's main goal? To reach Michonne, his love. He tries to escape four times, even resorting to cutting off his own hand in one attempt. But Lieutenant Okafor, a CRM officer, has other plans. He sees potential in Rick and wants him to join the army. Okafor believes this will give Rick a sense of purpose. Despite Rick's reluctance, he eventually agrees, partly to get Okafor off his back and partly to devise a new escape plan. During their military training, Rick and Thorne bond. Rick can't help but daydream about a normal life with Michonne. Meanwhile, Okafor, while working on his millet farm, shares his secret plan with Rick and Thorne. He wants them to change the CRM from within, making it more humane for people like them. Rick and Thorne have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, with Thorne calling out Rick for his situation. It is revealed that she's in the same boat as him, separated from her loved one, and she doesn't sugarcoat the harsh reality they face. Despite this, she offers her help if Rick just asks for it. Meanwhile, the CRM forms alliances with Portland and Omaha. Rick notices missiles being sent out but never returning. And when Okafor returns covered in blood, Rick senses something's not right. Major General Beale pays Rick a visit, trying to figure out if Okafor is up to something or if Rick plans another escape. Rick stays tight-lipped, but Beale suspects there's more going on. Okafor continues his secret meetings, and Rick uses the blueprints to plot escape routes. Even Esteban reluctantly lends a hand. During a resource run, Rick tries a risky escape plan involving a fake body. But when he spots a young girl amidst a horde of walkers, he can't leave her behind. Thorne, who's been keeping an eye on Rick, helps him out and accidentally reveals that Okafor knows about Michonne. That night, Rick confronts Okafor, who admits to reading all of Rick's escape plans and knowing about Michonne and Judith. Okafor reveals his dark past, including his involvement in bombing LA and Atlanta. Rick calls him out for being a pawn of the CRM, leading to a tense confrontation between the two. Rick surrenders to Okafor, expecting the worst, but Okafor surprises him by sparing his life and urging him to use his influence within CRM to make positive changes. Meanwhile, Thorne and Rick learn that Omaha has fallen, and Thorne suspects CRM's involvement. She encourages Rick to accept his situation, even revealing that she could have let him die during the resource run, but chose not to. Feeling hopeless, Rick attempts suicide, but he fails and ultimately decides to embrace his circumstances. He stops writing letters to Michonne and focuses on his work with CRM, although he can't shake his dreams of her. As time passes, Rick gives Okafor the cold shoulder until they're on a mission together. Rick finally opens up, sharing a personal story about his father's difficult decision to save their farm. He draws a parallel to his own situation with CRM, hoping to make a difference from within. Okafor agrees to a truce and promises to prevent another Omaha situation. Tragically, their mission is interrupted by an unexpected attack. Okafor is killed and their helicopter crashes. A mysterious woman eliminates the remaining soldiers, but when she reaches Rick, she hesitates. The woman is revealed to be Michonne. Six years after the bridge incident, Michonne rescues Bailey and Aiden, who introduce her to their mobile wagon community, led by Aiden's sister, Elle. Elle wants Michonne to stay, but Michonne is determined to find Rick. Nat, a member of the community with pyromancy abilities, outfits Michonne with armor and a horse. They warn her about a massive horde nearby, but Michonne is thrown from her horse and surrounded by walkers. Nat, Aiden, Bailey, and others defect from the community to help Michonne escape. During their journey, they form strong bonds, especially between Nat and Michonne. Aiden feels guilty for putting them in danger as she was craving honey and got separated from Bailey. Despite Michonne's insistence, they refuse to go to Alexandria until she finds Rick. Tragedy strikes when a CRM helicopter drops chlorine gas on them, attracting walkers. Seeking refuge in a mall, Aiden succumbs to the gas and turns into a walker, infecting Bailey. Michonne is forced to kill them to protect the group. After recovering from their ordeal, Nat and Michonne continue to the bridge, only to find it littered with burnt bodies. Michonne fears the worst, but Nat urges her to believe that Rick is alive and advises her to return to her family. However, on their way back, they spot a CRM helicopter and decide to take revenge. 
Nat launches missiles at the helicopter, causing it to crash. While Nat covers for her, Michonne takes down the soldiers and finally reunites with Rick in tears. Their joy is short-lived, as a dying soldier fatally wounds Nat before Michonne can celebrate her reunion. With reinforcements on the way, Rick instructs Michonne to conceal her identity and act submissive. However, Michonne is just happy to be with Rick again. CRM captures Michonne, who adopts the alias Donna and shares Aiden's story as her own. She secretly meets with Rick, who promises to escape with her. Saddened by Rick's missing hand, Michonne is determined to make CRM pay, but Rick warns her that escape is their only option. Officer Jadis Stokes returns and deletes Michonne's interview footage. She agrees to keep Michonne's identity a secret, but threatens to destroy Alexandria if they attempt to escape. In the final moments, Jadis confronts Rick, demanding to know his plans. In a flashback, we see Rick's first encounter with Jadis when he enters the city. She tries to convince him that staying there is the future and that she saved his life. However, Rick remains adamant about escaping, and Jadis eventually leaves him alone. In the present, Jadis threatens Rick to stay put, prompting him to ask what changed. Jadis reveals that Rick alone can't do much, but with Michonne, they have a chance to escape, which would breach CRM security. Meanwhile, Rick convinces Thorne to support Michonne, emphasizing her importance as an A, as Okafor would have wanted. After Okafor's funeral, Beale admits to still not trusting Rick and promotes Thorne to command Major General. Thorne continues Okafor's plan and briefs Rick about it. She also warns him that Beale is keeping an eye on Michonne and advises Rick to take responsibility for her. Worried about Michonne's safety, Rick tells her they need to escape immediately. He goes ahead of her to prepare, but when Michonne arrives at the rendezvous point, she finds a dead body wearing her uniform and a letter from Rick. In the letter, Rick reveals that he's not planning to leave, but wants Michonne to return for Judith while he stays behind to cover for her. He instructs Jadis to report that Michonne has left and to conceal the investigation. Despite Rick's anger, Michonne refuses to leave and remains determined. She throws herself into her tasks with unwavering determination, catching the attention of Thorne. During her first visit to the city, Michonne encounters an artist who has been drawing her and Judith on phones. He reveals that it was Rick who asked him to draw them, but struggled to capture Carl's likeness. Michonne shares her search for Rick, and the artist encourages her to keep hope alive. Later that night, Thorne, accompanied by Rick, brings Michonne to Okafor's hideout and invites her to join their cause. She emphasizes that Rick is like family to her and acknowledges that she owes her life to him. Although Rick is initially wary, Michonne accepts Thorne's offer, and they welcome her into their group. Their first joint mission involves clearing the walkers on the border of the Cascadia base, where all the CRM higher-ups will be gathering for a summit. Thorne volunteers to be the bait, with Michonne as backup. However, when Michonne sees Thorne struggling, she takes over as the bait, and Rick joins her to help distract the walkers. Despite their success, Michonne urges Rick to escape with her, but he refuses. Upon their return, they face a furious Thorn who tries to shoot Michonne, but Rick intervenes. Back at the base, Thorn insists that Rick must stick to Okafor's plan, but Michonne feels she has no place there. To Michonne's surprise, Jadis appears, attempting to convince Rick to leave with her. However, Rick coldly states that they are over, as he belongs at CRM and Michonne does not. Unfazed, Michonne takes matters into her own hands during the helicopter ride back, grabbing Rick and jumping off. After jumping out of the helicopter with Rick, Michonne believes they need a break. They walk through a river and find a fancy apartment complex. One of the apartments is open and in perfect condition with electricity. It is quiet as Michonne changes and Rick realizes he has lost his walkie-talkie. This leads to an argument as Michonne tells Rick about their eight-year-old son, RJ but all he wants is her walkie-talkie so they can go back. Reluctantly, Michonne gives him the walkie-talkie. Rick explains that he lied about leaving together to protect her and tells her about Jadis' threat. Michonne suggests they destroy Jadis' evidence on Alexandria, kill her, and leave. They spot their crashed helicopter, and Michonne is happy because CRM will think they are dead. However, Rick still refuses to go home because he wants to change CRM in case they come after them. Someday, Michonne believes he is hiding the real reason why he refuses to return and leaves. Rick hesitates, but in the end, he goes after her. Just then, a CRM helicopter shoots a missile at the crashed helicopter to hide their existence. It attracts walkers in the building, and Rick and Michonne argue over which way to go before hiding in the building lab. They find the creator of the building, who is dead, and has left a suicide letter explaining how she couldn't create a safe haven. 
Michonne points out the similarities between the dead woman and Rick, who keeps insisting he's doing the right thing. He worsens things by suggesting Michonne may be a bad mother for leaving her kids for the uncertainty of his existence. Tired, Michonne just wants to leave, and as they fight through the horde, they argue over their kills. A chandelier suddenly falls on Michonne's legs, but Rick refuses to leave her behind, even though they are cornered. They manage to escape back to the apartment. Michonne thanks Rick for saving her, and he says she never has to thank him. They patch up and sleep together. They observe how the building stayed strong for so long, and Rick uses it as a segue to again bring up CRM and how he can fix it for their kids. She points out that he has the walkie, but never alerted the CRM. He finally tells her the truth about staying at CRM and explains that the only way he could survive was by dreaming of Carl and Michonne. But as years went by, CRM took away his memories of them to the point he couldn't remember their faces. However, he got used to it and he can't have her back if it means losing her again. She gives him the drawing of Carl she commissioned from the CRM artist and suggests he would want his father to take the chance he has. She points out that they found each other against all odds after a decade and they should love and protect each other together. Rick finally agrees and they leave together. They fight off the walkers and find a hybrid car. It's a stick and Michonne laughs as she takes over and they drive away. Father Gabriel Stokes is seen killing a walker as a CRM helicopter flies by overhead. Meanwhile, Rick and Michonne enjoy their time together, scavenging for supplies and making their way back toward Alexandria. Along the journey, they stumble upon a cabin and decide to take shelter there while reminiscing about Thorne's change of heart. During their travels, they encounter a trio of survivors led by a man named Red. However, Red attempts to betray them, prompting Rick and Michonne to subdue him and reclaim the supplies they had offered in good faith. A flashback from three years ago reveals a moment between Jadis, now going by the name Anne, and Father Gabriel Stokes. Anne confides in Gabriel about the inner conflict she faces, torn between her loyalty to her new community and the cruel actions she is forced to undertake. Gabriel offers her comfort and support. In the present, Anne comes across Rick and Michonne as they leave behind a trail. She explains that she left many things unsaid after parting ways with an important person, and now she must eliminate any connection between herself, Rick, and Alexandria to ensure everyone's safety. Despite her intentions to kill them, Rick and Michonne fight back, resulting in Anne getting wounded. However, Rick prevents Michonne from delivering the final blow, showing mercy toward their former adversary. A flashback from two years ago reveals that Jadis agrees to meet with Gabriel once a year. During one of their meetings, she asks about Rick's wife, and Gabriel shows her the ring that was intended for Michonne. Jadis expresses gratitude for their conversations, admitting that she feels more like herself when she's with Gabriel compared to the cruel things she must do at CRM. Gabriel suggests that she help Alexandria, but Jadis feels helpless as her hands are tied. Touched by his gesture, Gabriel gives her the ring as a symbol of hope and faith. In the present, Rick and Michonne pursue Jadis, who encounters the trio they met earlier. The trio agrees to offer shelter to Jadis, and while Michonne wants to confront her, Rick prefers to attempt negotiation first. However, they are ambushed by walkers attracted by the trio, leading to a struggle. In another flashback from a year ago, Jadis and Gabriel share a tender moment, expressing anticipation for their annual meetings. Despite their growing bond, Jadis becomes increasingly conflicted as she feels compelled to carry out more drastic actions each year. Gabriel tries to persuade her to come to Alexandria with him, but when she refuses, he accuses CRM of being selfish for hoarding resources. Their disagreement escalates when a walker appears, and Jadis points a gun at Gabriel, viewing him as a potential threat to CRM's secrecy. In the present, Jadis discloses that Beale is prepared to give Rick the Echelon briefing, offering him a chance to save humanity. She urges him to make a decision, and they strike a deal to allow Michonne to return home alone. However, both sides betray each other, leading to chaos, and Jadis gets bitten in the process. In the flashback, Gabriel challenges Jadis, but she effortlessly dispatches the walker, prompting Gabriel to believe that she still retains her humanity despite her actions. In the present, Jadis, now dying, expresses her loyalty to CRM, weary of losing more people and believing in CRM's resilience. She reveals that the dossier on Alexandria is located at Cascadia Base, and implores Rick and Michonne to take it and leave. However, Michonne vows to seek justice against CRM for their atrocities, and Jadis accepts her fate. 
She passes Gabriel's ring to Rick, expressing regret for not being able to pursue her artistic aspirations before the apocalypse. With a heavy heart, Rick fulfills her wish and puts her down. As Rick and Michonne depart, Rick proposes to Michonne and she accepts. Meanwhile, Gabriel mourns Jadis, constructing a grave for her as a CRM helicopter flies overhead. Rick and Michonne devise a plan. Rick will obtain the briefing while Michonne retrieves the dossier. Their goal is to inform the city about CRM's bombings and then make their escape. They agree to use the walkie-talkie to communicate if anything changes. Amidst their planning, they question their sanity due to the extreme measures they've taken to protect their loved ones. When Rick returns, he falsely reports that Michonne has perished. Thorne welcomes him back, but she experiences a change of heart. She realizes that Okafor's death resulted from his lack of faith in CRM, leading her to abandon her desire for change. Rick pretends to go along with her decision. Meanwhile, Michonne sneaks into Jadis' room, discovering Gabriel's drawings scattered about. She locates the dossier but is caught by a CRM officer. In self-defense, Michonne is forced to eliminate the officer. Beale is impressed by Rick and shares his own survival stories. He reveals that Philadelphia and Pittsburgh were engaged in a civil war when a massive horde of walkers approached. Beale evacuated Philadelphia in secret, allowing the horde to overrun Pittsburgh before bombing it. He proceeds to deliver the Echelon briefing, explaining CRM's research findings. According to their data, humanity has only 14 years left due to the increasing walker population, food shortages, and the potential spread of diseases from the dead. To improve their chances of survival, CRM destroys communities to obtain resources, maintain secrecy, and gain strategic advantages. CRM has spies, known as embeds, placed worldwide to monitor and influence existing communities, and some survivors have been subjected to experiments. Beale admits that this is why they destroyed Omaha, with Portland being their next target. Once they control Portland, CRM plans to declare martial law, eliminate the city council, and continue eliminating any potential competition. Meanwhile, as Michonne attempts to leave, she overhears a meeting discussing the child evacuation protocol. CRM intends to evacuate a select 10% of Portland's children, avoiding those who may stand out or be different. After the children are removed, CRM will destroy the city. Horrified by this revelation, Michonne alerts Rick by keying the walkie-talkie, though Rick deceives Beale by claiming it's a call from Thorne. Beale sees Rick as a potential leader for CRM because he willingly returned despite being free. Rick's story offers hope to those who may resist CRM's control. Beale offers a deal. Rick's family will be spared and brought to the city, even if they are classified as type A's. He asks Rick to swear on a sword, but Rick surprises him by attacking and stabbing Beale with the sword, declaring that he will save the world. Rick hides Beale's body in a container and takes an elevator. A guard joins him, but Rick notices the blood and realizes the guard's intentions. They fight, and Rick kills the guard by smashing his head. Back on the ground, Michonne urges Rick to stop CRM themselves. Rick contacts Thorne via walkie-talkie, claiming that Beale is killing walkers. However, when Thorne investigates, she doesn't find Beale. Instead, she discovers Rick's prosthetic arm in Beale's room, realizing that Rick is backing out of their plan. She recalls Rick's persistent claims about his wife being alive and his efforts to help Dana, connecting the dots about their true identities. Michonne creates a bomb using grenades she learned about from Nat. Rick expresses his desire to leave, regretting the time he missed with his kids. But Michonne reminds him that their mission is to save lives. They plant the bombs in the tent filled with poisonous gas and attach a wire to Beale and the lift guard, who have turned into walkers. Thorne discovers them, but they hide under a water tanker as the bomb goes off. Most of the Echelon guards are killed, and the remaining ones become walkers. Rick finds himself surrounded while Michonne confronts Thorne, who is wearing a gas mask. Thorne argues that love is meaningless in a dead world, but Michonne disagrees and stabs her. Rick sets off a grenade, shocking Michonne, but he uses a walker as a shield and survives. Meanwhile, Dying Thorne realizes that Okafor was right and Beale was wrong, finding hope in their actions. After this, Rick and Michonne escape over the containers and reach the Civic Republic City, where they expose CRM's wrongdoing. The city council announces that they are taking control of CRM's remaining forces, who are innocent. Citizens are also given the option to leave and CRC offers shelter to those who arrive. Then Rick and Michonne are provided with a helicopter to return to Alexandria. Meanwhile, RJ and Judith run to hug Michonne while Rick watches from a distance. 
Judith expresses her hope that Rick was alive, and RJ asks if he's the brave man. Rick tears up as he fixes RJ's sheriff hat and tells him he can call him dad. RJ reveals he also knew Rick was alive, and they all share a hug at the end.